greet you everybody everywhere Every Friday at this time he comes to say hello by air Brought to you by Adana For the smile of beauty And Vitalis For well-groomed hair Ipana, Vitalis Two products you should know On the Alan Young, Alan Young, Alan Young Show Yes, it's Friday night again, and Bristol Myers, makers of Ipana for the Smile of Beauty, Vitalis for Well Groomed Hair, bring you the Alan Young Show. A half hour of laughs as we follow another escapade in the life of Alan Young. And now, in order to join the star of our show, we must push north through the wild and rugged mountains, across the blazing desert, until we finally reach Van Nuys, California. It's morning, and in a small white cottage, we find Alan greeting the new day. And here, with his pal Zero, is that young man who is young today and young forever, Alan Young. Ah, oh, what a lovely morning. Just look out of this window, the birds singing, the sun shining. Oh, hello there, Mr. Milkman. <laughs> Just leave me three empty bottles again. Surprised how many nickels I get back this way. <laughs> ah, it's a grand morning. Zero. Yeah. Zero. Come over to the window. Look at these beautiful birds. I hate birds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Zero, that's no way to talk. You should love our fed friends. I hate birds. <laughs> be reasonable, Zero. After all, the chickens are birds, and if there weren't any chickens, there wouldn't be any eggs. If there weren't any eggs, what would you eat for breakfast? Birds. <laughs> <laughs> The kind of morning you should go right out and get yourself some work. I hate work. But zero. I hate work worse than boy. All right. <laughs> zero, you should be more industrious. Be like me. How when I think of what I was and all the work I did and what I am today, while well, I just stand there and say, hmm. <laughs> Well, I had a job last week. You had a job. It was a good job, too. Janitor in a bank. Yeah. Why did they fire you? You didn't do anything wrong. Of course not. I was perfectly innocent. Mm. It's just that every time I got near the safe, my vacuum cleaner developed dishonest tendencies. <laughs> Zero, sometimes I'm really ashamed well, of you. Well, I'm sorry, Alan. I wouldn't do anything in the world to hurt you, honest, Alan. Yeah, I, I guess you wouldn't. I mean it. I'd do anything for you. Anything at all. Boy, I'd give you the shirt off of my back. And it'd fit, too, because it's your shirt. <laughs> Listen, Alan, you oh, know that I... There, 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 there. Alan, you took me in when nobody else should give me a chance. All you, right. You'd give me a roof over me. Yeah, no, no. I was down and out when yeah. I met you. Things looked black, and at night I was going to end it all. And, Alan, you saved me. Just when I was going to drown myself. Oh, you couldn't have got your head in that glass of beer anyway. <laughs> I was trying. You were trying, yeah. yes. Like I had 60. a head on it, I might have made it. Hmm. Alan, I'm no use around here. I'd better go. I think I'll pack your things and leave. <laughs> Be calm, Zero. I've got problems I own to worry about. Alan, whatever it is, you know you can count on me. No, it's a personal problem, Zero. It's my girlfriend, Betty. Oh. Her father's getting back from his vacation. He's been away a whole month. He'll be arriving soon. Just when everything was going so swell with Betty and me... When he gets home, I probably won't see Betty again. So you won't see Betty again, so what? She ain't the only pebble on the beach. No, but she's the roundest. <laughs> when Mr. Ditton Pepper left, he said if I didn't make something myself, he'd never let me in his house again. Oh, it's awful. When you and I got into bed last night, Zero, I, I even dreamt about him. All night long, I kept dreaming about Mr. Ditton Pepper. Yeah? I was dreaming about Ingrid Boydman. <laughs> it was awful. I kept tossing and turning, tossing and turning, tossing and turning. Yeah, by three o'clock, me and Ingrid were both seasick. Oh. <laughs> so wonderful calling on Betty without having that father hers around. He never liked me, never. Well, he never even let me stay in the same room with her. Many's the time I had to kiss her goodnight through the keyhole. <laughs> Hey, look, Alan, I got an idea. Mm -hmm. If you want to get rid of this guy, I know a couple of boys who do wonderful work with cement. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I want you to stop hanging around with those characters. 
can't understand why Dick and Pepper won't let me marry Betty. After all, I'm a, I'm a clean-cut American boy. I don't gamble. I don't go to burlesque shows. I buy all my books in Boston. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm crazy about her. I'll get it, Zero. Gee, Betty's so soft and cuddly, like yesterday's butter. Hello, Alan. Betty, gee, come on in. Isn't that a beautiful day? Alan, I've got news for you. Ah, who cares about news? But it's about Daddy. Ah, who cares about your Daddy? Uh, he's coming home tonight. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> ah? What are we going to do? Uh-huh. <laughs> Betty, this is terrible. Oh, don't worry, Alan. It's still a beautiful day. The sun is shining and the birds are singing. I hate birds. <laughs> uh, hiya, Mr. Pepper. Oh, hello, Mr. Zero. Hey, Alan. Why are you wearing such a long face? My short one didn't come back from the laundry yet. Uh-huh. Betty, this is terrible. Oh, what are we going to do? I made up my mind. I'm going to do something that's going to make your father very happy. Well, Alan, wherever you move to, don't forget to write. I don't mean that. <laughs> I'm going to do something to make your father like me. What can I get him? What does he need? Well, I don't know, Alan. He did say something about having the garden landscaped. Oh, but you couldn't No, do that. I guess not. Hey, what's the matter with you, Alan? If the man wants his landscaped, scape it for him. <laughs> It's a big job, Zero. It's a lot of work. Well, don't worry, Ellen. I'll help you. I'm crazy about flowers and trees, and especially them little buds. Yeah, that's the miracle of nature. Yeah, certainly is a miracle, all right. How them little buds can push their way up through all that dirt and come out so clean. <laughs> Look, Alan, this is my chance to do something. I'm going to repay you. Zero, you know what it means. You've got to get plants and shrubs and trees and flowers. <laughs> I'll just leave it to me. You go over and dig the holes, and I'll be back in an hour. Oh, gee. <laughs> Betty, when your father sees that backyard, he's going to think I'm wonderful. But, Alan, Daddy will be home in just five hours. So what? You can get a lot of things done in five hours. Why, five hours, we could get engaged. We could be married. We could raise a... F- no. No <laughs> sense rushing things, is there? Alan, be reasonable. What's wrong, Betty? Well, you can't plant things and expect them to grow in five hours. What did you say? You can't plant things and expect them to grow in five hours. May the Chamber of Commerce have mercy on your soul. <laughs> I hope this makes Daddy like you. Yeah. If this works, the rest of our lives can be as happy as this last month. Oh, it has been a wonderful month with Daddy gone. That's right. Your father's been gone a whole month. Four whole weeks. Yeah? You know, it feels so funny walking around without any open wounds. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Alan, you shouldn't take Daddy seriously. I shouldn't? No. Daddy just has a big, rough exterior. But underneath that hard shell, he's weak and soft. I don't know what you mean. I once opened an oyster. <laughs> Believe me, Alan, he just acts tough. Oh, I don't know, Betty. Oh, really? His bark is worse than his bite. You're wrong. I've had both. <laughs> anyway, it's been a wonderful 30 days, Alan. I wish those moments could go on forever. Yeah. Why do I have to have so much trouble with your father? Well, Alan, he lacks a successful man. But I was successful. I started out to be a man and I became one. <laughs> I better hurry now. I gotta get a shovel, a hole, a spade. Oh, and to think you're going to do all this work just for me. Planting and digging and mowing. Oh, I'd do anything for you, Betty. Well, if you said Alan Young, jump off a building, I'd jump off a building. If you said Alan Young, jump off a bridge, I'd jump off a bridge. If you said Alan Young, jump off a cliff. Yes? Couldn't we play something a little easier like post office? <laughs> Yes, and if anyone wants to be the man with the well-groomed hair, Vitalis and the famous 60-second workout is the answer. For this popular hair-grooming preparation does wonders for your hair and your scalp, too. Loosens a tight, dry scalp, routes loose dandruff, and helps prevent excessive falling hair. 
There's no patent leather shine, no plastered down look after you use Vitalis. No, indeed. Your hair looks well-groomed in a natural masculine way. So get a bottle. Now that Vitalis is back at all drug counters, and then take just 60 seconds to give your hair and scalp that stimulating, helpful Vitalis workout. See what a difference Vitalis makes. Look at the man with the well-groomed hair. He uses Vitalis. Now let's drop over to Ditton Pepper's backyard, where Alan Young and his pal Zero are busily at work in the garden. Zero, hand me that shovel. Now, hand me that hoe. No, hand me that pickaxe. I got that dandelion out. (laughs) Plant some of those flowers there. What kind of flowers did you bring, Zero? Oh, we got all kinds. Yeah? Chrysamapins. Yeah. There's uh, geraniums. Yeah. Redamadrums. Redamadrums. Yeah. I even got some schlemelias. Ah. <laughs> Zero, your pronunciation is very sloppy. What was that? I say your pronunciation is very sloppy. Well, I got dressed in a hurry this morning. Never. <laughs> Better plant the rest of these trees and flowers before Dip and Pepper arrives. Let's see now. Have you got any early bloomers? I told you I got dressed in a hurry. <laughs> Come, on. Come on, help me now, Zero. Let's plant one of these big trees over uh, here. Certainly. Let's see now. Uh, which end do we put in the ground? Put the bottom end in the ground, of course. The end with the roots on. Roots? Certainly. Every tree has roots. Every flower has roots. In fact, every living thing has roots. Including Ingrid Bikeman? Well, <laughs> that's not exactly what I meant. Of course, her roots are buttes. <laughs> we cover the roots up with this dirt. Yeah, yeah, with the dirt. You see, yeah. the roots draw in nourishment from the mineral content of the lower soil. Then, by the process of osmosis and capillary action, the solution travels through the central core up through the trunk until it permeates even the uttermost strata. And they do it so quietly. (laughs) How come you don't know anything about nature? Well, I was brought up in a city. I never even seen a tree until I was 11 years old. There were no trees at all? Not one tree in the whole neighborhood. Even the squirrels lived in telephone poles. Uh, (laughs) We're almost through here. Help me with this last tree. Okay. Peggy. Hey, this is a funny one. Look at the way them branches are twisted. Yeah, it's the strangest looking tree I ever saw. But then... Oh, Alan. Oh, hello, Betty. Hello, Mr. Pepper. Oh, hello, Zero. Oh, the backyard looks beautiful. Uh-huh. Oh, Daddy will love it, Alan. <laughs> and doing all that digging, I'm glad you had the sense to wear those heavy mittens. These are blisters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've got blisters on your itsy bitsy fingers. Oh, it's nothing. Oh, <laughs> those nasty wasty blisters all over your handsy wansies. Please, Betty, these blisters aren't so nasty wasty. My handsy wansies aren't so bitsy witsy. Excuse me, I'm going down to shoot a game of poolsy poolsy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, to think you worked so hard planting and digging and getting blisters just to make Daddy happy and also you can win my hand. Oh, Alan, I, I don't know what to say. Say I'm strong and handsome. I like that sort of stuff. <laughs> Gee, Betty. When your father sees this guard, maybe he'll change his mind about me, and the rest of our lives will be as happy as this last month. Oh, it has been wonderful, Alan, walking through the woods and sitting on the bench. Mm. Oh, but what I liked best of all was rowing on the lake. You really row beautifully, Alan. Oh, thanks. I wish we'd had oars. <laughs> <laughs> My fingertips are still wrinkled. <laughs> and... <laughs> Do you remember that picnic we went on? Oh, yeah. Gee, you must have had a wonderful time. Yeah. You laughed and giggled all day. Is that because you were with me, Alan? Well, not only that, Betty, the places those ants go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we certainly had a wonderful time. Yeah. Oh, here goes. oh, that must be Hubert Updike. A filthy rich Updike, all right. Oh, <laughs> Alan, Hubert's all right. He's too darn rich. Who else has a 1946 car with a bumper? Well, Betty, Alan, I'm here, I'm here, and I just dare South America to take me away. (laughs) Hello, Hubert. Oh, I'm just 
just frightfully exhausted. I had to drive over here all by myself. Oh, that's too bad. What happened to your chauffeur? Oh, the bounder didn't show up for work. It seems his chauffeur quit. <laughs> it's, a, it's a vicious circle. Uh, Hubert, I, I suppose you've come over to welcome Father home. You have hit the nail right on the cranium. <laughs> I've always felt the word head was vulgar. Don't blame you on you. It does look vulgar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but here I am, Daddy, uh, bearing a few gifts for Papa. I might have known you'd try to impress him just because you got a lot of money. Well, I haven't got as much money as I used to have, Alan. You remember that room I told you about that was full of thousand-dollar bills? Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it's going down. Huh? And now when I stand on my tiptoes, I can breathe in there. <laughs> <laughs> Hubert, what did you bring for Daddy? Well, I was going to bring the old boy some real estate, but I changed my mind. Why? Well, I had a deposit on Alaska, but they refused to raise the temperature. I wouldn't bring it up. <laughs> but uh, I didn't stop at real estate. I also brought your father a large white diamond. Oh, where is it? <laughs> well, I was dragging it here when the authorities stopped it. <laughs> they thought I was stealing Mount Ball. <laughs> you know, Hubert... Alan is presenting my father with a little gift, too. Yes, and I'm sure it's little if it's coming from Alan. <laughs> oh, now, Alan, all is fair in love and war. <laughs> oh, Hubert, Alan does the best he can. <laughs> Just look what he's done for father. He's landscaped the backyard. Heavens to hollyhocks, so he can. <laughs> well, I still say the landscaping over on my Beverly Hills estate is much better than this. Oh, yeah, what's so great about it? Well, I have a whole staff of gardeners for my flowers. Mm. I have one man just to open up the petals so the poor things won't have to ring. <laughs> <laughs> I planted some very nice things here. Just look at those rambling roses. Well, I have rambling roses on my estate, but they don't ramble. <laughs> Oh, yeah? All rambling roses ramble. Ours have no better place to go. Oh. <laughs> of course, in my garden, I maintain a certain color scheme. Yeah? Nothing but reds and greens. Yep. But, Hubert, later in the year, they're bound to change. Not in my garden. Hubert, in the fall, the leaves are bound to turn brown. They wouldn't dare. <laughs> You have, you have to admit these trees are nice. Oh, if you want to see trees, come over to my estate. Mm. I have cypress trees, spruce, hemlocks, cedars, and I even have a few fir trees. Pink, of course. Of course. <laughs> well, after all, Hubert, you have such a large estate. Oh, yes, yes, it's an immense place. Two solid acres of pepper trees. And that's nothing to sneeze at. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a witty one. <laughs> I'm cooking with gas today. High octane, of course. High octane. <laughs> oh, golly, Daddy must have arrived. I, I think I hear him in the house. Oh, goody, goody. When he sees the presents I've brought, oh, I'm sure I'll win Betty's hand. Don't be so sure, Hubert. Alan, this is my time to cook your goose. Oh, quack, quack, quack. <laughs> Please, boys, no arguing. Now, you wait here. I I'll go in and help Daddy. Oh, hello, Dad. Hello there, Betty, my dear. Oh, my, you're certainly looking wonderful, Well, Daddy. why shouldn't I? Never had a better vacation in my life. Just think of it. Four whole weeks away from Alan Young. Uh, Betty, uh, help me with these suitcases. Certainly, Daddy. Oh, gee, it certainly is good to be home again. Oh, you know, this place looks beautiful to me. Oh, Daddy, you talk like we lived in a mansion. It, it's just a small house. Well, that's all I want out of life. Just a simple little home where I can hang my hat and Alan Young. Oh, Daddy, uh, let's forget Alan for a minute. Here, sit down in your favorite chair. Yeah. Did you do a lot of hunting? Oh, yes, yes. And this year I had some wonderful luck. I shot a moose. I even had its head stuffed. Oh, good. <laughs> we can hang it right over the fireplace. Nothing doing. I don't want anything up there that would remind me of you-know-who. <laughs> But what's new with you, Donner? <clears throat> Have you been seeing Hubert Updike? Daddy, why do you always insist I marry Hubert? Well, if you marry him, you'll be in the upper crust. And if I marry Alan? You'll spend the rest of your life with a crumb. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little joke. Oh, but it's nice. It's nice to relax here after my trip. 
Greetings, Papa. Welcome home. Good morning, Mr. Pepper. <laughs> well, Hubert, my boy, it's nice to see you. Certainly is nice of you to be on hand to welcome me. Good afternoon, Mr. Ditton Pepper. Yes, sir, Hubert, it's a real treat to see you again. <laughs> After being away for a whole month. Good evening, Mr. Ditton Pepper. Well, another day shot. <laughs> Mr. Ditton Pepper, now that you're back, I thought we could be friends. Surely you've heard that old saying, forgive and forget. Alan Mabor, that's exactly what I believe in. <laughs> forgive and forget. You do? Yes, so if you'll forgive me, I'd like to forget you. <laughs> I don't understand why you feel this way about me, Mr. Ditton Pepper. After all, I'm a wide awake young man. I'm on my toes. By back in manual training, I was the first one to finish my floor lamp. <laughs> 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 no, why quite fade, Alan? Uh, let me talk to Mr. Dittenpepper. Uh, Mr. Dittenpepper, I'd like to present you with these tokens of my esteem and affection. Here, here. Just look at this. Oh, Hubert, it's lovely. Gee, a platinum pajama top. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't be without one. Uh, nothing like them for a good rigid night's sleep. <laughs> and uh, here's another present for you, Papa. A hand-painted necktie by Rembrandt, of course. <laughs> Hubert. Rembrandt died 300 years ago. How could he paint that necktie? I've got so darn much influence. <laughs> oh, Daddy, look out the window. I want you to see what Alan's done. Alan Young? What's he been up to now? If he's been ruining my garden again, I'll take him and... Alan, my boy. The landscaping, it's beautiful. Those trees, those flowers. Alan landscape this whole backyard just for you. Alan. Yes, Mr. Ditton Pepper? Alan, my boy, let me shake your hand. <laughs> Blisters. <laughs> Alan, hmm? Alan, I'm sorry for all the mean things I said to you, my boy. Oh, Papa, you call Alan your boy, but I'm your boy. I am, I am, I am. <laughs> Hubert, I appreciate all those nice things you gave me, but what Alan has done goes beyond mere money. He's poured his heart into that garden. He's poured his soul into that garden. Three bags of fertilizer, too. <laughs> Alan, my boy, you can have a date with Betty every night this week. I can? That's right. And I won't even sit in the room. You won't? Nope. Gee, who will tell me what to do? <laughs> I knew that landscaping would make a hit with Daddy. Yeah. Oh, just look at those beautiful flowers and trees. Oh, look at that big tree over there. I've never seen such an unusual tree. Those twisted limbs and square leaves. <laughs> twisted limbs, square leaves? Why, that's a Froxinius crept in the Ruxerus. <laughs> Please, Hubert, there's a lady present. <laughs> That's, that's what it is, a Frogsonius Cuprinexorus. I've, I've seen that tree before someplace. Oh, my boy, yeah? let's go out and see my garden. Uh. Why don't you spend the evening with us? Come, Betty. Come, Alan. Let's go. Goodbye, Hubert. So long, loser. <laughs> so Alan thinks he's won, eh? Well, you can't keep an updike down. <laughs> <laughs> That tree in the backyard was stolen from the botanical gardens. I'd bet my bottom dollar on it if I could reach down that far. <laughs> I'll just sneak into the hall and get to the phone. Oh, now here's the phone. Now to put that Alan Young in hot water. <coughs> oh, I do love to call a botanical garden. <laughs> He's going to be in hot water as sure as my name's Larry Keating. And all because his friend Zero seems to have involved him illegally with Fraxinius Cryptonexorus. <laughs> Look, I'd be careful what you say about people, Mr. King. Oh, Zero. Gee, I, I didn't know you were around. Yeah, it's a good thing, too. I ain't never been mixed up with no mob run by a guy named Cryptonexorus. Oh, well, Zero. <laughs> Zero. Cryptonexorus isn't a gangster. It's a... Uh... 
Well, Ooh. one of the wonders of nature. Nature? Is that good? It's wonderful. Gee, tell me more. I'd be glad to. Good. One instance of how wonderful nature is yes. comes when you're brushing your teeth. Well, I get... Uh, <laughs> I get it. And all of a sudden, there's a warning tinge of pink on the toothbrush. That's nature's way of saying, watch out. Pink toothbrush means it's time to see your dentist. And he'll tell you whether that pink toothbrush is serious or if it's simply a case of the soft, creamy foods we all eat, letting our gums become lazy and sensitive due to lack of exercise. So if gum massage is indicated, chances are he'll recommend Ipana and gum massage. For a national survey shows that seven out of ten dentists recommend gum massage. Not only that, but the dentists themselves prefer Ipana toothpaste Two to one over any other dentifrice for their own personal use. For you see, iPana is designed not only to clean teeth, but with gentle massage to aid in the health of your gums. So if you want firmer gums, brighter teeth, and a more sparkling, attractive smile, why don't you try iPana toothpaste and gum massage? <laughs> now, let's listen to the smart set with a new arrangement of Louise. Every little breeze seems to whisper Louise. Birds in the trees seem to twitter Louise. Each little rose tells me it knows I love you. Love you. Every little bee that I feel in my heart seems to repeat what I felt at the start. Each little sigh tells me that I adore you, Louise. Just to see and hear you. Joy I never knew, but to be so near you thrills me through and through. Anyone can see why I wanted your kiss. To lose. It had to be, but the wonder is this: can it be true? Someone could love me, love me, Louis. When we left the Ditton Pepper household, Hubert Updike was busily engaged trying to put an eight ball in front of Alan Young. But now as we look in on our hero and the Ditton Peppers, Hubert's scheme doesn't seem to be working yet. Well, Alan, my boy, it's nice having you here. Just make yourself right at home. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> would you like a cigar? No, I don't smoke. Uh, how about some Southern Comfort? No, thanks. This pillow I'm sitting on is fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Come on, Alan, have a drink. Where's your backbone? You ought to know. You pulled it out of me three months ago. <laughs> oh, Alan, everything's working out so beautifully. Yeah, but does your father have to sit on the couch with us? <laughs> Why bother about Daddy when we're sitting here sandwiched so close together? Mm, I don't mind being sandwiched with you, Betty, but can't we get rid of the dill pickle on the other end? <laughs> Please, Alan, don't say anything to offend Daddy. Daughter, there isn't anything that Alan could say that would offend me. Right now, Alan is number one on my hit parade. <laughs> Hello? Oh, it's for you, Alan. Oh, well, thank you. Huh? Oh, well, hello, Hubert. Yes, just sitting here on the couch with Betty. Pardon me while I unpucker. <laughs> <laughs> What's that, Hubert? The tree was what? From where? By who? Sorry, by whom? 
the the authorities on their way over? Hubert, what am I going to do with this tree? Please, this is a party line. <laughs> What's the matter, Alan, my boy? Something wrong? Wrong? Oh, no, wrong. <laughs> I always turn yellow this time of year. <laughs> Oops, don't answer that door. Don't answer that door. Alan, nobody knocked. Well, it's a good reason, isn't it? <laughs> well, as I was saying before, Alan, my boy, and you are my boy. Yeah. I'll get it. Come in. Pardon me, are you Mr. Ditton Pepper? That's right. My name is Cunningham. I'm the Commissioner of Parks. Uh, I suppose you're here to see me about my wonderful landscape. I certainly am. Well, I gotta go decorate my Christmas tree. <laughs> gotta press out last year's tinsel. <laughs> see ya. Mr. Ditton Pepper, you may be interested to know that every tree and flower in your garden was stolen from the botanical gardens. You're under arrest. Trees, flowers, stolen? Botanical gardens? Under arrest. What a memory. Repeated it word for word. <laughs> Alan Young. Wait a minute. Didn't ever. Remember what you said? I'm number one in your hit parade. Well, to each his own. Come here. No, no, no. <laughs> put down what you got in your hand. Put down what you've got in your hand. Yes, Daddy. Put Alan down. <laughs> Mr. Ditton Pepper, you'll get 30 days in jail for this. 30 days in jail? <laughs> Not so bad. Just think of it as another month's vacation. <laughs> oh, Daddy, there must be some mistake yes, here. Yes, and as long as I live, you'll never marry him. <laughs> Mr. Ditton Pepper, besides the 30 days in jail, there's a $2,000 fine. Alan Young, you'll rue the day. Anything you say, you name the day and I'll rue it. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Ditton Pepper, besides the 30 days in jail and the $2,000 fine... We're going to prevent people from entering your department store. Alan Young, I'll break every bone in your body. And Mr. Dickenpepper be Ooh, spiked. such a blabbermouth! <laughs> <laughs> I'm a ruined man. My business, my life, my family, everything ruined. Oh, this is terrible. Daddy's going to jail. I've lost Alan, the only man I've ever loved. <laughs> Mr. Dittenpepper hates me. I've lost Betty. Maybe I ought to end it all. Well, how are you, folks? Everybody happy? What do you want? <laughs> Who, me? I'm Alan Young's best pal, Cyril. I'm his buddy. I helped him landscape your backyard. You charlatan. Thanks. I ain't danced in years. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to see it's you. Explain to Mr. Dittenpepper, it's all a mistake. See, this fella here claims the trees and flowers were stolen from the botanical gardens. Oh. Go on, Zero. Tell him you didn't get them from the botanical gardens. Mister, I didn't get them from the botanical gardens. Well, in view of this new evidence, we shall have to apply the habeas corpus and look into the res ipso licitur. Does that mean i got to take them back there? Yeah, oh. <laughs> I'm afraid I'll have to take all three of you into custody. Uh-huh. Before we go, I'd like to check the evidence. Follow me into the backyard. Oh, Mr. Cunningham, I tell you, I'm innocent. One of the most atrocious crimes ever committed in this county, yes, yes. Every one of those trees and flowers came from the botanical garden. All right, let's get this over with. I'm an innocent man, but... Wait! I... Look at that tree! The Fraxinius Cryptonexorus! There's a bud on the top branch! A bud, do you hear? Gee, I'm sorry. Sorry! Why, for 30 years we tried to make that tree bud, but never succeeded. Our scientists tried everything to make this tree bloom. Potassium phosphomanganate, calcium chlorohydrate, sodium bismol nitrate. And to think all it needed was a little Van Nuys date. <laughs> Mr. Ditton Pepper, your name will go down in horticultural history. You mean I'm not going to jail? Jail. You'll be the toast of the scientific world. You set up a new Luther Burbank. How you like that? A Burbank coming from Van Nuys. <laughs> Naturally, all charges against you men will be dropped, and you, Mr. Ditton Pepper, will receive an honorary membership of the Botanical Society, and we shall set your backyard aside as a monument to Ditton Pepper's blooming Fraxinius Cryptonexorus. <laughs> Friends and assembled guests, this is one of the happiest moments of my life. And to think I owe it all to my dear future son-in-law, Alan Young. Alan, my boy, 
I'm sorry for all the mean things I've said to you. Mr. Dittenpepper, this is the second time today you've changed your mind about me. First you didn't like me, then you liked me. Then you didn't like me, then you liked me. If you think I'm so afraid of you, you can keep me on a string and pull me back and forth. Yes. Just call me Yo-Yo Young. <laughs> everybody. I hope you've had a little fun with us tonight and you'll be back for another visit next week at this same time. In the meantime, please remember the two fine products that bring you this show, Ipana for the smile of beauty and Vitalis for well-groomed hair. So until next week, this is Alan Young saying good night. Thank you. Larry Keating reminding you that the Alan Young Show is produced by Eddie Poehler. The script is by Alan Sherwood Swartz and Joe Young. The part of Hubert Updike is played by Jim Backus and Zeal by Charlie Cantor. The music is by George Weil and his orchestra and the smart set. Alan Young is you next Friday. We thought you'd like to know at this time and on this station with the Alan Young Show when we shall entertain you with nothing but the best. All you do is just relax and we will do the rest. My Panna, my Dallas, two products you should know on the Alan Young, Alan.